Okay. I was not planning on making this video, but it is June 30th, the last day of Pride Month this year. And I kind of figured, why not? Since this is something that I haven't really talked about a ton since the video that I made, I guess, two years ago where I came out. So I did, I guess, what you would call a soft launch of not being straight two years ago in a video on unobserved characteristics in machine learning and how we probably shouldn't be using machine learning tools to try to identify them. And the main focus of that paper was the queer community. And so my opening for that video was basically me being like, you know, you could maybe guess that I'm black with some reasonable accuracy, guess that I'm female with some reasonable accuracy, but you couldn't guess that I'm bisexual. And funnily enough, I didn't intend for that video to be a coming out video in terms of coming out to you, to my audience. It, it, it really felt like an example of the topic of that video and the topic of that paper that just felt very apt. And it was also a video in which I, especially because when I talk about fairness and bias work in AI, I often talk about my lived experiences as like a person of color and as a woman. And I thought it would be weird to not, <laughs> to make a video talking about the intersection of AI and queerness and not bring up the fact that I'm also queer. Like it, it felt like it would be disingenuous. And so I think that, I don't know how people took that video in terms of their assumptions about my journey to figuring out that I was not straight. I feel like when you soft launch like that, people often assume that like you knew the whole time and it was never a big deal and it was just not something that you felt the need to advertise, which is certainly true in some ways. But I thought I'd walk you back a little bit further through how I figured out that I wasn't straight because when I put up that video, it was a somewhat more recent understanding that I guess I'd come to with myself. So I would say through high school, probably, I had never considered not being straight. I do think that, I don't want to say, I don't know, the 2000s and the early 2010s were like a different time, but they kind of were. I had plenty of queer friends. I had a friend who transitioned when they were in college, but were exploring their identities before that. And so it's not, it was something that I had come across. I just never, it had never struck me that might also be me. And so I <laughs> got to high school and my friend group and I from high school all joke that we were not very good about boundaries with each other, but it is funny in hindsight to be like, yeah, but we were definitely all particularly <laughs> odd about it and probably blurred the lines more than I think the average teen figuring out their stuff would. And so I think because of that, I also never assumed that I was anything but straight, mostly because I had dated a guy when I was in high school and I had female friends that, you know, some of us were probably a little bit too touchy with each other, but that was just our dynamic. And so it didn't really strike me as odd to, to see a guy friend and potentially be somewhat attracted to them and then see a female friend and, and potentially be somewhat attracted to them. I just thought that was a normal thing that everyone had. And I did know in the back of my mind somewhere that there were male and female friends that I had that I was like in no way attracted to at all. Like it wasn't even, nothing was there. But I just thought that, you know, I'm straight, but isn't everyone like a little attracted to everyone? Which, you know, <laughs> signs. The other thing that I think would, I guess I would say would have probably flagged me on it earlier if I, you know, were 10 years younger and were going through that experience now is actually fandoms. <laughs> I got into fan fiction in I think middle school whenever I got my first phone that had internet access. And I tended to follow a lot of fandoms and pairings that were queer and that were not necessarily queer in the original show or the original book series or whatever, but where people were writing new works that put characters together in queer relationships. I made a TikTok about this a couple weeks ago, highlighting thinking I was straight until I was like 20 years old. And then the category, the list of people that I always thought were like hot and interesting and Chigo should have ended up with Kim Possible and stuff like that. So it, it is a little bit funny in hindsight to see, you know, where things were manifesting. So when I got to college, I think at that point, I guess I assumed, I feel like the trope around bisexuality that I heard a lot growing up was basically that everyone in college has like a bi-curious phase, but it doesn't mean anything. 
And so I went to college and I definitely assumed that was the phase that I was going through. And I had a friend in particular who I think was the turning point for me to start seriously considering, oh, wait, I don't think this is like a phase or like something that I'm just like doing for funsies in college because I was really romantically interested in that friend and she's a woman. And it was a relationship that never would have worked out if I'd pursued it. So it's not, I don't know, the like U-Haul gaze situation where, you know, we we fell madly in love and then moved too fast and things imploded. There were other reasons why we would have been incompatible, but it was the first time I was in a position in which I liked multiple people at the same time. And one of them was a guy who I would actually end up going on to date. And the other was a girl who I had similarly strong feelings for at the time. And by the time I ended up dating the guy, I kind of got into a place where I was able to put my feelings about the girl behind me. So I wasn't pining for someone else behind his back because I think he follows the channel. But that I think was the first point at which I was like, I think this might be, I think this might be more than just a phase. I think that I might be bisexual or pansexual or something like that. But the other thing that I think I, I found confusing or I didn't understand how to fold into this understanding of things like sexuality was that I, I've never enjoyed dating apps. I've never been good at them. And I mean that in the sense of the people that I found myself romantically interested in tend to be people that I've known for at least a few months, someone that I've developed a friendship with or an emotional connection with. And for me, like the sexual attraction to someone, I would say 80% of the time follows from that. So I can see people who are like walking down the street and be like, that person is like objectively attractive. And also I feel nothing about that. <laughs> like I do not, Tinder is like a terrible app for me. Cause it's like, you swipe on some pictures and I'm like, I don't, sure you're cute, but I this this doesn't do anything for me. So I went to grad school and I think grad school is the first time that I was like, let's just see what happens if I start swiping on everyone and go from there. I don't know how I came across the idea of the, the romantic spectrum as being separate from the sexuality spectrum. But I think that that was the point at which I was like, oh, how attracted I am to a person really does depend on knowing them as a person before I can start thinking about that. And so I think that on some level that actually made coming out or figuring out that I was, I guess at the time bisexual these days, I tend to identify as like pan slash queer. It comes a lot more down to do I like you as a person? And also do I find you like physically attractive? But, you know, have we... Do we have an emotional connection, which I'm like, oh, like, I, I like this person. So I go to grad school and I'm kind of swiping on the apps, but I'm also kind of not really swiping on the apps. I was going on dates with primarily men at the time. And then COVID happened and the pandemic was awful in so many ways. But the silver lining, I suppose, one of the silver linings of it for me was that it did give me a lot of time to work on things like mental health and figuring out things like sexuality and starting to be able to take some time to, to ask myself those types of questions without necessarily having to do it while balancing everything else in my life and while trying to figure out like if I'm going to delete Hinge for the third time this month or whatever. I don't know that there was anything that like made me finally be like, yeah, I think this is it. I think there, there just came a point where I was, I know that I also like women and so what's, why, what is the point of, you know, continually questioning myself about this and trying to like find some metric that will make me feel like this is valid because it is valid and it's valid because I say it is. And so at that point I'd been casually kind of coming out to my friends over the course of kind of the 2019 to 2020 in that I would kind of slided into conversations a little bit more and none of my friends were surprised or really ever made any comments about it. But by the time that I got to uploading that video, the only people I hadn't told were my parents. And so I should say up front, my parents didn't have any issues with it. I think it's just, I don't know, the anxiety of, you know, having, knowing that your parents like raised, I guess, one version of a child and then figuring out that 
you know, you're not that person anymore, and then figuring out how to say that. And so my parents are, or at least my dad is subscribed to the channel. <laughs> Hi, dad. And I knew that when I posted the video, <laughs> I had to call my parents after <laughs> because I posted it without calling them first. So posting the video, I say that I don't consider it to be my coming out video um, to the world because I didn't make the video. The point of the video for my audience was not to like announce that I wasn't straight, but the point of the video on some level for me was to, you know, have the conversation and be more open about it. So that is the journey, I suppose. I don't think much has changed in the two years since I put out that video, still super single, but a lot of that's also COVID and like dating and COVID was hard and I'm starting to get back onto the apps and trying to get out more, but also trying to like find more community where I live because I know that in addition to just like wanting to make more friends, <laughs> that for me, if the goal is to form more relationships and meet more people and ideally meet someone that I'd want to be with, that will probably work better than the apps will. This is, I guess, my actual coming out video. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments. I don't know that I'm going to answer all of them depending on what the questions are, but I think I didn't make this video two years ago in this way because I didn't want to make a big deal out of it at the time. And it's still not something that I would say I like to make a big deal out of. I don't want you to only know me as someone who's queer. Like I want you to know me as a scientist and a science communicator and a woman and a neurodivergent person and a person of color and a queer person. And so I think I'm much more interested in like the constellation of those things and how they intersect, which is why I worried about making this video, I suppose, because I don't want to, I don't want the message of this to be that it's easy and it always goes well and it's like whatever and it's not important because it is, you know, learning more about yourself is important. Being, being comfortable in, in, in the communities that you're in is important. Protecting trans people is important. And talking to other queer creators that I know, I heard a lot of stories about people watching videos like this and looking up coming out stories as a way to, to validate their identity, but also as a way to, to see that there are other people out there and see, you know, that there's a lot of different ways to be queer and a lot of different ways to identify and a lot of different ways to incorporate that in, into your life and who you are as a person. And I figured, Hopefully this helps someone by just adding my story to the pile. I feel like they can be a more honest version of themselves, whatever that means. All right, we're back because I had to go to work. I don't want to say that like your self-development, your self-discovery journey is directly comparable to the journey of learning about and developing your skills in AI and machine learning and other STEM topics. But when I think about my personal journey, when I think about the ways that I've grown to learn more about myself and who I am as a person, I think a lot of it has come down to being able to Google things and learn from other people who have been through what I've been through and uh, hear about other people's experiences in almost a similar way to the way that I've learned science and dived dove in into topics that really interest me. And so I'm happy to say that Brilliant is sponsoring today's video and that it's a place where you can certainly learn more about STEM topics, although probably not about your sexuality. I don't know, I might be wrong. Brilliant breaks down complex topics into digestible parts, making it easier to understand the whole topic. For example, they have a course on logic that I've taken a couple times now. Logic is all about making connections between ideas and problems and seeing relationships between them. Their courses are interactive, they are engaging, and they allow you to learn by doing with bite-sized lessons available for busy people like me and probably like you. And Brilliant has amazing courses that you should definitely check out. I've been diving into their astrophysics course because I just read my friend Serafina's book and it's amazing and it has made me want to learn more about astrophysics. But Brilliant is also about fostering a mindset of lifelong learning, something that all of us, regardless of our 
identities or our interests or where we are in our self-discovery journey can certainly benefit from. After all, understanding the world around us can help us understand ourselves better. So if you're curious and you want to dive more into STEM learning, you should go over to brilliant.org slash Jordan or click on the link in the description. And Brilliant's offering a free 30-day trial for anyone who uses that link, plus the first 200 of you to use it will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription.